Easy. Okay. Um, okay, guys. So I want to I want to start. We'll start by doing what we always do, which is uh, type something that you're grateful for in the chat. And um, and so I'll we can go actually first. I've been grateful for this trip, man. Yes. We are at the Greenbrier in West Virginia, and we, believe it or not, us two have been fishing, <laughs> fly fishing for the last two days, and it's been interesting, but actually, we we're pretty good fishers. We really are. I think we beat the guys, and, you know, we can be still and quiet for pretty long periods of time. I think by the end of the second day, we were pretty chatty, but we didn't scare all the fish away, so that's the good news. That is the good news. Yes, that is very good news. Okay, Monica is grateful for a successful client event on Saturday. Oh, awesome. Yeah, that's great. Oh, Katie, I didn't even know that. So glad you said that. Barb, you know Barb Gale. Yeah. Knee replacement surgery yesterday. Oh, no wow. clue. Wow. Okay. Oh, there's Amy. Perfect. Grateful for books. Yeah, we'll have to reach out to Barb. Getting to spend time, Tracy, with my son, with my Navy son's family. Oh, Aww. that's great. Oh, newest granddaughter. Yay. Oh, congratulations. That is awesome. Oh, Sam, I am jealous. Robert Madu was at your church. Ah, oh, super jealous, man. I love Robert Madu. You'll have to share your notes on that. So as you guys keep going, look at all these fun pictures I found Yay, that's to great. announce you. Okay. So for those of you that don't know Linda, um, I was like, where do I start? Man, she is the queen of passive income. She's a real estate uh, franchise owner. What? She, I should have written it for you. Like, I know. Okay. I know. We'll do that next time. Uh, she's an author. She's a speaker. She's a mom. She's a friend. She's a wife. And she's a Mimi. <laughs> and a fisherwoman. <laughs> and now a fisherwoman. That's why I added that one on there. Yes. Um, and so I was just really anxious to get uh, Linda to be able to. Oh, Stephanie Kellerman. I'm thankful for Linda and all that she does oh, for us. Yes. Sweet. Me you. too. Me too. So I wanted to, to me not talk today and have you guys hear from Linda and just have her answer a couple questions. So let's talk first about what mindset means to you and why it's important. Okay. Well, I think mindset is your attitude and it could be your attitude about what's going on in your life right now. It could be attitude about what you do for a living, but it's, it's kind of how you think about something. Yep. And I think it's kind of the launching pad for how everything else goes. So why do you think it's important? Well, because I think what's, what your thinking starts kind of catapults you in a direction. So if I've got really crappy thinking, um, then you know, I'm probably not going to find the great opportunities in the day, or I'm going to not, you know, see things through a good lens. I'm going to actually ha have a tainted lens. Yep. So I think it kind of sets the foundation for the activities you do, your, you know, how you treat other people, just how you feel totally for the day and, and what your thinking is. And I think our thinking controls everything else that we either achieve or don't achieve. Yeah. So will you go back and just start a little bit and tell them kind of your background, just how you sure. grew up and then, sure. cause I think that has a lot to do with mindset. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, well, it's real funny cause we're up here in the, is this the hills or a mountain? Mountains. <laughs> we're in the mountains of West Virginia. <laughs> Sorry. I did not do well in geography or history either or whatever. And I didn't in biology clearly. <laughs> Obviously she did not know biology about fish. We'll tell you all that story later. So, but I grew up a lot like what I see around here. I mean, I literally grew up, um, James and I talked about this because mm -hmm. we have very similar backgrounds. James was our fishing guide and he's been doing this. He started the Greenbrier probably 40 something years ago. He's an amazing guy. He's Gary Keller's right arm up here with, with guiding and, and all of his stuff up here. And uh, he's just an amazing, amazing man. It's worth yeah. the fishing trip just to meet James. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we grew up the similar uh, in houses that you know, his didn't even have running water. I think we at least had running water, <laughs> but we had a pot belly stove to get warm. We had an outhouse. There was no indoor plumbing. And uh, I remember one time they wrote an article on our house. It was a hundred year old house. And wow. you know, that's, a, that's cool for a lot of people, but not, <laughs> not when you're living in it, <laughs> not when you're living in it. And all the friends <laughs> are going to see that you live in this old crappy house, which I, they kind of knew it probably anyway, when the bus drove by. But so, you know, I grew up very, um, but I, when you're a kid, you don't really know, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really understand. We, 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 you, we didn't get food stamps back then. We got commodities. So James and I were talking about sometimes starting like that. Uh, I think it does a lot of things for you. Number one, it builds character mm -hmm. of nothing is really that bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think when I see people, and especially even, you know, even my own, some of my own family members, when they grow up and they have plenty and they've never had to really worry about what mm -hmm. you're going to have or what you don't have, I think they tend to be afraid of what they're going to lose. Yeah. And I've never been afraid of what I'm 
going to lose. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had some fearful moments, but I've never been totally afraid because I've been there before and I've got here. So I feel like I can do it again. So yeah, dysfunctional family, both alcoholics, uh, just a lot of really honestly worry and fear as a mm -hmm. child. If I had to say, what's the words I remember, it's worry and fear. So maybe that's what drives me today. I don't know. But how did that affect your mindset? Do you think? Cause I feel like you don't have that mindset now. You know, what's interesting is uh, I, there's five of us and every one of us took a different attitude about that. Mm. So that's a great question. Cause I've never really thought about it like that, but I don't know where it came from, but you know, I just, you know, I'm sure I had some terrible attitudes and moments growing up like that, but I just saw that if I saw a glimmer of hope, I think attitudes have to do with your hope. How much hope do you have about the future or mm -hmm. about the day or about your opportunities or your life? And I think I saw enough people like um, I had a half brother that lived in a beautiful home and mm -hmm. you'd go, I, I got to go there once and sleep in his bed that was so comfortable and the sheets were so nice. That's why I have That's nice, why sheets, have nice now. sheets. That's why I have <laughs> nice sheets everywhere now. But I think if you can see a little glimmer of mm -hmm. hope of something different, and that's why I like to hang out with people mm -hmm. who've achieved more and have different things because they inspire me yeah. and give me hope, you mm -hmm. know, and it's not always about even about material things. If it's a person that's a great mother, yeah. a godly woman or something, I aspire to be mm -hmm. that. So I think that's why we hang out with each other and we mm -hmm. do certain things uh, with, you know, with certain people because they inspire you to be better wife, better mother, better realtor, better whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, how, what, how do you specifically keep a good mindset just on a regular daily basis, like some of the things you do? And then what about when you're in like a difficulty, a season of difficulty? Because we all have those. Okay, so first of all, never <laughs> expect yourself to have a 100% great attitude all the time. Because if you do that, if you look at anybody else, myself included, and you think, oh, well, she always has a great attitude. That's, that's you know, that's it. No, no, -uh. it's, <laughs> it's kind of like Gary's balance counterbalance. Mm -hmm. It's crappy attitude. How do I get myself out of that? You know, how do I get back to a good attitude? Yeah. I don't think it's a, it's a constant great attitude. I think we have moments. Uh, and you know, I've kind of thought about this cause I knew we were going to talk about it today. And I, I think sometimes our attitudes come from different things. Our fears, mm -hmm. like, you know, my biggest fear, and I can even think of an example this week where my mind went to, you know, something that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. In other words, in my mind, if I had kept it, uh, there's a lady named Katie Byron and she mm -hmm. writes these books called, is it true? I don't yeah. know what her books are called, but it's like, she'll tell you to ask, is that true? Is that really, really true? Cause a lot of times, let's say for example, someone told me something and I, and I'm fine about it. And then someone else says, well, do you think they really, what if they were just telling you that? And then your mind starts thinking, Oh, what if they were, <laughs> you know? And for me, it's sure like, we've all done that. <laughs> so, you know, if, and then, but that's a choice I have. Yeah. And what's interesting is when the week played out, it wasn't true. Mm -hmm. So I could have spent the whole week going, okay, he just told me that he doesn't like me, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, or yep. oh, he treats me different than he would treat anybody else. So, you know, you have to, you have to say, is that really true? Yeah. Do I have evidence? Because if I don't have evidence, I'm letting my mind decide something that's probably not even true. 99% mm -hmm. of what I first think probably isn't true. And I think if you get that, like you might be coming from, if you're a high social, you might be, well, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. And so that drives your thinking. Mine is being taken advantage of because I'm a high D. So I have to really say, you know what, what if that's not true? Mm -hmm. So I think whatever you're driven by, um, you know, if it's, I think those people don't like me. Is that really true? Do you really know that? And I learned a long time ago, what other people think about you is really none of your business. Mm, that's so you know? good. And so it might be hurtful in the second, but at the end of the day, does that really have anything to do with my life and where I'm going? Or does that really say more something mm -hmm. about that person? Yep. Love that. Okay. What about um, like through a season of difficulty? I mean, I, you've had some, we all have. Yeah. So how have you, cause you've been there for other people through, I mean, specifically, I think of probably Andrew and oh, you, ha and that was a season of difficulty. And then, but you had to be there for Bailey and your family. And so yeah. like, how do you keep your mindset during a difficult time? I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I probably wouldn't use that example, I'd, but I'm going to tell you that was probably one of the or most, or if you have another example. No, that's one of the most difficult examples. And I tell you why, because it's most difficult when you don't know when it, you don't know, you can't get out of it. Right. You know, most difficult situations, if I don't, if I'm in a difficult relationship, I can end that. That's mm -hmm. no problem. I'm out. Yeah. You know, I may get beat up a little bit first, but I'm going out of that relationship. Right. I am not staying in it. That's mm -hmm. a fact. But with this one, there was no way out. Right. Matter of fact, I remember one time Andrew called me 
Andrew was Linda's son-in-law who unfortunately passed away of cancer. Yeah, at 20, he was 29 when he got it, he passed away at 30. And um, I remember leaving there because they were six hours away from us and we would go there because you got to just be in the middle of that. And we would, yeah. we spent almost everything but about three and a half weeks there with them, six hours for them. By the way, we couldn't have done that without passive income. Mm -hmm. But one time I remember leaving because you sometimes just needed to get out of it. It was mm -hmm. so heavy and so hard. And I remember Andrew called me and he said, I, you know, I don't, I don't think you want to be here. And it really hurt me yeah. because I, I, and I said to him, I was just said, honest, honestly, Andrew, you're right mm -hmm. today. I, did, I mean, when we left, I didn't want to be there because I can't fix it. Yeah. I cannot do anything about it. And that's the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. So, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, and I think that's, that I think that's a good thing to talk about though, because that there is a difference between you have a difficult season that you can fix and you can get out of, and then one that really yeah. you can't. I mean, yeah. those are two totally different things and we all have those. And, and if we haven't, and I've told them Linda so many times how you talk about life's unexpected. Yeah. And usually life's unexpected are the times that you can't get out of yeah. for the most part. At least for a while, you know, so you, so during, what did I do during that season? I ran. Yeah. I mean, I ran even more because running is my escape. I, re I remember thoughts I had. Physically running. She physically means. <laughs> in his neighborhood when I would just get out of the situation and go run because it was painful to watch. It was, it's all very, you know, lung cancer and for someone that didn't even smoke. That's a horrible way for yeah. someone to die. So it was just hard to watch. So yeah. you, you, you needed your escapes. And to be honest with you, I'd have to leave sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'd have to get myself out of it to rejuvenate myself to go back in. Yeah. Um, I know you are very learning based, like super correct. We're both, we say all the time, like crazy learning based. I think if we could do anything all day, we would just go and somebody would pay me for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, um, ha talk, talk a little bit about that with your mindset. I mean, obviously like we're, we've been taught John Maxwell says when you stop growing, you die. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you think being learning based plays into your mindset? Well, first of all, if I had not been learning based, well, any of us, if you're, think about some mm -hmm. friends you're around from high school and they haven't been learning based and you realize how far yeah. ahead or behind they are mm -hmm. because every book I read is added to me. Every person I've met who uh, I've known has added value to me. They, they've helped mold the person that I've become. And without all the learning, you know, imagine what kind of thinking I grew up with in mm -hmm. that kind of situation. So there was my foundation. It was books and people and trainers and teachers and classes and every mentor, mm -hmm. whatever along the way that got me here. Yeah. So I think, I think you, you need that because each little piece adds a little part to who you become. Yeah. Um, before we go, we did, we did have a question and actually maybe two, let's see. Um, Oh, I love what Don said. You put it in, God pulls it out. Oh, love it. That's great. Yeah. So Curtis said, do you have any specific actions that can help change your mindset when you're in a rut? And yeah. that's kind of different. It is, but you know what? I, I, we used to have a business psychotherapist and uh, he, he was really good um, about helping us figure out, you know, systems. So one of the things he would do is uh, a lot of times the person closest to you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So we would kind of have a buddy. Hmm. And what we would do is, let's say for example, if Jimmy was in a rut, then my go-to person was Gary Ubaldini. Mm. And I would call Gary and say, Hey, will you call Jimmy? Oh, that's a so, smart thing. So have somebody. Jimmy's her husband. Yeah. Jimmy's my husband. So, so instead of me trying to pull Jimmy out of the rut, then he would have Gary. Gary. And so you, huh. you can have a person, but for me, uh, it depends on the rut. Um, but I think, you know, if you can reach out your hand to someone else and take, I've heard this, you've probably heard this a million times, but just try it. Like, let's say, for example, you're in a rut today. Why don't you pick up the phone and call another realtor and say, hey, I'm just, I appreciate you. We did a deal not too long ago. You're amazing. I think you're awesome. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate your responsiveness or whatever. You know, is there anything I could help you with? You know, mm. I, I'd love, to, or, or I just I went to that. this class or I just listened to this thing on mindset. And I had some great notes. If you wouldn't be offended, I'd be happy to share those with you. Putting the focus out sometimes yep. take it takes it off yourself. Totally. Um, and you know, what whatever other mechanisms for me, running helps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what what how long has this been going on? Who who else can can 
talk me through this? How have mm-hmm. I gotten through it before? And John Maxwell always says, identify what got you in the red. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if you can figure out what got you there. Yeah. Like if it's something, if you're doing something on a regular basis, you don't love doing, mm-hmm. uh, you're going to stay in that rut as long as you keep doing that. That's you true. might have little highs, but right. get, go figure out how do I get from where I'm at doing things I absolutely hate yep. a majority of the time to something I would love that would give me energy and change my whole attitude. Mm-hmm. So it depends. You're exactly right. What got you there in yeah. the first place? Is it your thinking? And is that really even accurate? Is it true? Or are you just making it up? Um, you know, do you, you know, doing an exercise that we do in strategic coach is awesome. I, it's always painful for me to do exercises, but I always feel better after we do them. But <laughs> if you sit and think about what, what great achievements have I had over the past 90 days? Yep. Uh, and then right now in this moment, what's given me momentum? Oh, I love that worksheet. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and then in the w- future. And then what, what do I have looking forward to in the future? A lot of times there's a lot more there, but it's yeah. kind of buried under everything else. It's yeah. Kind of stuck I love that. Side. We might be able to kind of share a version of that, that sheet. Um, okay. So that actually takes us into the next question. What do you believe is the different mindset between people who are, are wealthy and millionaires versus those who aren't? And then I would like for us to talk about just when like Rhonda and I, Rhonda sitting here, you can't see her right now, but Rhonda Smith's here too with us. I said, today we have a studio audience, (laughs) Um, but we were talking yesterday and I, and I was still, you were saying, I used to get so, this is going to sound kind of mean, but not frustrated, but you know, when you're sitting down with another agent or with another person and they say, Oh, I make enough money. I don't need any more money. Mm -hmm. And I would always kind of be like, Oh, Really? I mean, because money is good for the good that it can do. And we were, we were sharing an example yesterday. We are uh-huh. here in West Virginia. Actually, you, you share that about. Well, we're here in West Virginia. And in 2016, they had a massive flood. Uh, and Gary, I mean, Gary Keller has a house here. And the, the, the area was devastated, devastated. And so we have no Keller Williams up here. Mm-hmm. But we sent our KW big semi truck full of mm-hmm. products and you know, our people came to help and Virginia region came over and helped. And Gary just put lots of energy and money and resources into a community. Yeah. And he could not have done that had he not never said, I got enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he made a huge impact here. So what do you think is the difference between, between the mindset and that? Abundance and scarcity. Oh, good. If people come from abundance, meaning I'm not worried that, that, what you have, Mm -hmm. you know, that what you have has nothing to do. I'm happy for you. And, and that should propel me if I like what you have Mm -hmm. to say, Hey, wow, that's kind of cool that she does that. And she's able to do that. She can do that. So I think abundance and scarcity, when people come from scarcity, they hoard. And I don't think the world gives you more when you hoard or, Mm -hmm. you know, what does he say? Be a river, not a res, not a reservoir. Reservoir, or yeah. Like that. But also, about. he always says that thing um, about the when your hands, when you're holding on to something or you have scarcity, your hands are closed, so you can't receive. But when you have abundance and your hands are open, like your hands are open because you're giving, but they're also open for you to receive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think if you catch yourself in scarcity, you just have to say, okay, let's. Let, how do I get it to abundance? So I think the biggest difference is abundance and scarcity. Okay. Yeah. That's really great. And what do you think about how, well, maybe just to go a little bit deeper on that, what would you say if somebody like their natural tendency is to think scarcity mindset? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we all have a little bit of yeah. it. So I don't think anybody is, oh, well, easy for you. You're all just abundant mindset. No, that's not true. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and even, you know, I always hate it when people like on the KPA and stuff and that was an assessment that we have, people think that the the optimist person is a better person mm-hmm. and pessimist and is wrong or pessim- whatever. whatever. It's not pessimist, but I don't know what the other yeah, one is, I can't think of it. but the truth is that's not true. Right. The truth is one, one never really sees what could come mm-hmm. be happening or coming. And the other one is always kind of saying, that's great, but what this might happen. So they're more, yeah. some kinds of a realist or whatever. So I think, um, what's the question again? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> oh gosh. It's been a week. It has. Fishing is hard work. We're tired. The millionaire versus not millionaire. The millionaire versus not millionaire. Yes. And and um it's skepticism. Opticism versus skepticism. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, this more, is like I mean, an, a podcast episode <laughs> gone wrong. <laughs> This is really what y'all see before the recorder that's, comes on on the podcast. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's why we don't do live. <laughs> uh, that's um, funny. Okay. Well, I don't remember the question, but anyway, we'll just go with it. So. Any, anything else on millionaire mindsets versus 
non-millionaire mindset? Well, I think it's a focus. Mindset is not, I didn't have, I don't know that I had a millionaire mindset. I have I, somewhere along the line through whatever reason, I gradually and suddenly, I think that happened in my life, yep. decided that I needed to have a mindset of, of, well, and I think a little bit is the abundant. I don't, I don't think it's scarcity and I don't worry about, I don't ask myself the questions when is enough enough? Mm -hmm. So I think if you just, Oh, open, that's a great point. It, Share what Gary told you when you emailed him about that. Remember? Yeah. So, so I used to really get frustrated because, um, I, I didn't understand why people would say, you know, well, I've, you know, I'm just happy where I'm at. I got enough or whatever. And that like Dana, that kind of was like, I don't really understand that because, and it's not about the things, but I don't understand not always achieving. Right. I mean, why would you why not always want to see what's over the ridge? Well, because people would say to you, well, Linda, you've I already mean, achieved Lord. it all. Why are you still working? Why yeah, are you yeah, still yeah, doing this? Yeah. And a lot of times it's family. So I emailed him and I said, look, um, I, I'm struggling. I know there's got to be an answer to this, but <laughs> I, I'm so close to it. I can't see it. And he emailed me back. He said, you know what, Linda, life is about becoming. And the way we become is we get up every day and we try to achieve mm -hmm. more. Sports teams don't win one championship and quit. Um, they go back out on the field and they work harder and they see who else, what else, who else they can become. Yeah. So I love that because I love when that. I really think about it, all the things we're talking about mm -hmm. today is who you're going to become. Mm. And if you decide that, you know, to, you don't need more. That's bad to even think about continuing to achieve. Cause if you give enough value to the world, you can't keep the money away. I say that all the time. Yeah. But if you, if you just say, okay, well, I'm just after this number, then everything else that you could get from it just goes away. And it's only about the number. Mm. And so I think you just have to say, what, I don't want to get, and there's some kind of story that I heard years ago about somebody getting to heaven and the, the angel was taking him around and, and he sees this huge building and the building is like huge. Everywhere he goes, he sees a corner of the building and he goes, what's in that building? And he goes, you don't want to know. And it's like, no, I got to know what's in the building. <laughs> I'll give you the short version. So eventually the guy says, well, what's in that building is all the blessings that were meant for you that you didn't ask for that you didn't ask for. You didn't take advantage mm -hmm. of. So that's kind of the way I see it. If I don't get up and keep trying to achieve yep. more, then I'm not going to become whoever I could actually eventually become. Mm -hmm. I have become who I am today from all the achieving I've worked at and tried mm -hmm. all the years, yep. you know, all the many years, 30 something years in the real estate business. And sometimes people don't even see that. They think that it was like a, you know, one thing that you, oh, you achieved profit share and that yeah, made oh, you like, it's all the things and all the years of the work. I think and, a lot of people forget that. And getting up every day and saying, I wonder what I can achieve or how big can I get this to be. And the limitations are always with myself. If mm -hmm. my business is only this size, it's because I haven't learned to master people yet. You know, once I learn to master people, yeah. then the business will get bigger. Mm -hmm. And so, so a lot of people don't want to do that because they don't, you know, maybe they get stumped on the headache of, of different, trying different things with their business. But the truth is the real value is going through that issue and that, tr that hard thing, because mm -hmm. on the other side is, is a new you talk about the 50 yard line. Cause we've asked a lot about that. <laughs> so years ago when I was going up to Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, I had to, first of all, I had this amazing real estate business that was doing 200 transactions a year back when 200 transactions a year put me number one in Keller Williams realty. Yeah. And, uh, it was really, everything was working fine. And all of a sudden I started not being I, I needed something mm -hmm. different. I wasn't challenged. I got mm -hmm. sick of just new wallpaper, new color carpet. <laughs> and so I mentioned to Gary, cause he was my coach at the time. And so he recommended that I now take advantage of the last region that was available. So that meant I had to get on a plane, go to Ohio and in Kentucky and talk to everyone about trying to do Kellen's franchises back when no one knew who Kellen's was. <laughs> it was really hard. I had no clue what to, what I was doing. Uh, I'm sure there are moments when Gary thought, Lord, she's never going to get that done. Um, and so I would get up and I would do it really, I'm very tenacious. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe he knew that. So I would get up and I would keep trying, but there was times when I really felt like quitting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really did. And I'm not a quitter. I don't, I mean, I, I just don't like to quit. So I called one of my friends who is when you're in leadership, you can't call everybody and say, I'm having a really bad <laughs> attitude or day to day. You just can't do it. You can only call a few people. Mm -hmm. So I called Joe Harker because mm. he was over in the Heartland region doing the same thing I was. And I said, Joe, 
I don't know, maybe I've made a mistake. Maybe I'm there because I don't want to let people down. Right. And so my thinking of quitting was I'm letting my family down. I'm mm -hmm. leaving them yep. on a regular basis to come do this. I'm letting Gary Keller down. I'm letting Mo Anderson down. I don't want to let people down. Maybe I should, you know, maybe I'm just can't do this, you know, <laughs> cause at three years, it took me three years to get my first market center. So I, um, I said to him, I said, I don't know. I think, I think maybe I've made a mistake because I'm, maybe I'm not, maybe I can't do mm -hmm. this. And he looked, he said to me, Linda, you can't quit. You don't, cause you don't know if you're on the 50 yard line or the five and mm -hmm. that little bit of speaking into me gave me such inspiration. I'm like, you're right. I think I'm on the five <laughs> and I went right back out there and I'm so glad I did because now we have what, 29, 28 market, 28, city, yeah. 28 market centers. Uh, in a region and we changed so a lot many of people lives. on this call are really glad you did too yeah. well, <laughs> myself we, I, included I, 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 yeah. <laughs> and we changed and we changed lives and mm -hmm. we made great friends and yeah. great relationships that I would have never had to get chill bumps thinking about yeah, it totally you know so um so you just you know you just gotta you know you just gotta know that bad attitudes come but they also go yeah definitely uh, okay we got one question from david how do you recommend taking an abundance mindset but then practically turning it into a profitable or successful outcome how like if you're already abundant um how, how would you take that and turn it into having a profitable outcome in your life well i think uh you have to include more people mm -hmm. and i think this is the part that stops a lot of people yeah and myself included yep. almost you know many times and probably you too yep yep i mean i've had calls from you when you're like <laughs> remind me why i do this again <laughs> yes. why do we have to have all these people you know <laughs> that i have to try to figure out how to work through and with and all that stuff and yep. i've certainly been there myself yep. so i think the difference between you know i think you can get to a certain level by mm -hmm. yourself and i'm a real good solo achiever Insane. man i can i can get a lot done but at some point to get in a really big and abundant light you have to switch and say i've got mm -hmm. to now start doing it through other yep. people and that's where it's hard and frustrating <laughs> and and all those things but you just got to keep working at it and most of the time i go okay what do i still not know mm -hmm. or you know what have i done wrong and you know how did i handle that and could i handle it differently and you're going to keep making mistakes but if you're in deep enough relationship with people they're going to forgive you and, and, yep. and, and, you know, let you go, <laughs> go try again. <laughs> Thank God. Thank y'all. But anyway, um, so I think abundant, true big abundance mm -hmm. is going to, and, and success is going to be with those people yeah. and through those. And by the way, not around them. There's a lot of people that succeed yep. at a high level with people working all these little worker bees, but they're doing it around them. When you do it through yeah. people, it's a lot harder because you got to take them with you and their mm -hmm. lives have to get big also. Yours can't be the only one. Man, and that takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of, you know, and a lot of inner inspection of, yeah. you know, where am I sucking at this and how can I get better at this? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, man, it's 9.30. Oh, we could have gone for an hour. I don't know how you guys feel about that. But so really quickly, um, hang with me for one more minute. So Linda is teaching Quantum Leap. And for those of you that are non-Keller um, Williams people, which we have a lot, uh, or non real estate people, you don't, this is not a, I'm trying to look and see those on. This is not like a real estate thing. Um, this is probably my favorite I course. So, uh, yeah. So in a nutshell, like 30 seconds, tell them what the, the class is about. Well, first of all, I did it years ago for 150 of my past clients. Oh, Quantum Leap. I loved it. I, it was one of my greatest joys. That's to a great idea. People. We have such amazing tools and classes and books and things with Keller Williams that I love sharing with my clients and my database, um, because everybody grows from them. But Quantum Leap is really about, you know, what disciplines and habits do you need to have to have an abundant life? Because yeah. really it's our disciplines and habits that create that abundant life. Yep. And it's how do we think about our money, our time, yep. because all those things add up to the results that we're currently getting. Yeah. And so I think to me, that's, that's probably the number one thing. Yep. Okay. So um, we are, te Linda's teaching this digitally and uh, I'm going to, if you give me like one second, uh, I am going to post the link in the chat really quickly um, for you guys to register. It's 39 bucks. And if anyone would like to, we would love to have you. Let's see here. Uh, hold on one second. Copy link. Okay, perfect. I'm going to post this in the chat. I know several of you have already. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work or not. Hopefully it will. Oh, Rochelle, that's awesome. That is so awesome. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Linda, yeah, for being thank on. You. Appreciate it. We'll have to do it again. Thank you guys day. so the much. Yes. Have a great day. <laughs> the audience is Our clapping. Our studio audience is clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, see guys. Ya. See ya.